So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built my studio desk. It was something that took me like a weekend to do. It was very affordable. It looks awesome, it does everything I needed to do. So um, yeah, if you like it, please like and subscribe and uh, I'm gonna get right to it. So initially, I wasn't gonna make this a desk build video because I've already done a couple DIY desk builds on this channel. I wanted to purchase something and the desk that I wanted to get was the platform by Output. Um, to me, I just think it looked like a very slick desk. It's simple, it was affordable. I think the natural wood color would look great with the way I've been doing everything in the studio so far. However, when it came time to purchase it, it turns out that because of the pandemic and because of the state in which commerce and shipping is at right now, they're not shipping to Canada. So either I would have to wait a long time apparently, or I could just make a DIY desk building video. So I decided to give myself a challenge on this. When it came time to design this desk, I had some restrictions. The first thing was budget. Um, I wasn't gonna spend a lot of money on it because I don't have that. Uh, two, um, I have a small window of time. So whatever project I take on, I have to be able to do like within a weekend. And three, it has to look awesome. So this is the plan that I came up with. This is my doodle. Um, took me, took me a, a good day and a half to figure out what do I need in a design, how I'm gonna do it, and then I put it to paper. Now, if this is a build you are interested in, there's a link below to a new website and a new podcast that I'm working on called Music AF. So check out the podcast, check out the website, and download the plans. They're better than this, and they'll give you a good starting point. So for this project, you're gonna need two four by eight sheets of material, whether it's gonna be a plywood. I used a plywood that had a laminate. I had an aspen laminate because that was the cheapest one, but you can get it with maple, uh, oak, and it looks really nice and it finishes really nice. Or you can even use like an MDF uh, board if you want. I think I paid $65 a sheet for mine, which is pretty expensive compared to what it was the last time I did a desk build. I think that's what I paid for the maple or even less for the maple at the time. But anyways, as you all know, wood's expensive. So shop around and see what you like. When it comes to cutting, in the previous videos, I always used a jigsaw because I'm just scared shitless of a circular saw. But in this case, I decided to bite the bullet and learn how to use a circular saw properly just to speed things up because the one thing with the, using a hand jigsaw um, machine is that it takes a long time and you're gonna go through blades. Even if you get the expensive ones, you will cut through blades. If you decide to use a jigsaw, just make sure you have a really good guide. Take your time, get blades with um, more teeth. The more teeth, the cleaner the cut's gonna be, especially when you're dealing with laminate. I think I explained this in the last video, the concept of blowout. So if you look at how a saw, whether it's a circular saw or a jigsaw, there's two parts, right, to the cut. So you have it where it enters the cut and normally that's clean, but then when it leaves the cut, the teeth will chip out the board a little bit and you get blowout. So there's really no way around it. I've, I've seen people talk, like, I've seen people talk about, you know, putting masking tape and it keeps it from blowing out or scorching it with a knife before you cut. I've never had any good luck with that. Um, so maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I think the best thing is think of what side is gonna be exposed to the person looking at your furniture or your desk and just make sure that it's the entry level of the cut that they're seeing because it'll look clean and professional um, and then keep all your blowouts um, on the inside of the desk or the build or whatever you're doing. You wanna make sure you have a blade with a lot of teeth. Uh, again, you're dealing with laminate and because the circular saw has a lot of um, power behind it, the blow, it becomes way more apparent. So uh, just to keep that in mind when you're doing it. So before I did any cutting, the first thing I did was I drew out on the plywood um, just where I'm cutting, what are my lines, just to see how it looks. Um, I had my ballpark. Um, plans in front of me and I drew it out just to see if I, everything makes sense and when I was happy with it that's when I started cutting. The way I cut is I laid everything down. I had some scrap wood that I laid underneath it and instead of uh, being parallel with the cut I did everything horizontal so as long as the blade wasn't hitting the ground I would just have it go a little bit past uh, the wood and when I cut through I would literally cut through the supporting wood underneath it because I don't care. Um, it kept it from binding and it was totally fine. So I started doing all my cuts and I think cutting everything took me, oh, I don't know, maybe like three hours taking my time, which is amazing compared to the last time I did it, which took me a lot longer. Once I had everything cut, it was time for assembly. Now, assembly can be pretty tricky um, just because you're dealing with some big pieces. If you have a second set of hands to help you, that would be great because it will make this go a lot quicker and um, it won't be so lonely. 
But if you decide to do it by yourself, just make sure you have some good support. In my case, I had some old workhorses kicking around, so I used those to kind of balance one end while I screwed the other end in. It, it was a bit of a juggling act, but it worked. So yeah, when you're screwing in, please pre-drill. Use pilot holes because if you try to drill straight in to the wood, you're probably gonna split it because in, in my case, I was using plywood. So yeah, um, it splits easy and it sucks and it's not an easy fix. So pre-drill and you should be fine. So once assembly was done, it was time to sand and I just went over everything with a power sander. I used 120 grit sandpaper and I just went over everything and because I'm using a laminate, it worked out well. There wasn't many rough edges. Um, if it was just like cheap plywood, yeah, you're probably gonna wanna use a lot more sanding and probably a heavier grit. But in my case, um, yeah, it was fine. And then finally came time for the finish. Now, there's a ton of different ways you can do this. I went with the easiest, spray can lacquer. The nice thing about this is you can spray it, come back a few hours later, spray it again. You don't have to sand between coats because it's just how lacquer works. I ended up doing like maybe six coats. That was it. It just gives me some protection because there are gonna be things on my desk that will probably damage if it wasn't uh, protected. But yeah, spray can lacquer and that was it. So if you are interested in this build, please follow the link to below to the website. Um, it's Music AF. This is a new podcast that I and my friend Mark have started up. He runs a website called Fairtone Studios. It's amazing, check it out. He's got a lot of great stuff. If you like guitars, if you like studio gear, um, definitely a channel you wanna follow. So anyways, I'll have the plans there. Feel free to download, do whatever you want with them, make it better, because I'm sure you could easily. Um, and let me know what you've done. Uh, send me pictures, leave comments. I'm totally for seeing what people do with this stuff. Anyways, thank you very much. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, that's cool too. Um, yeah, you're all awesome. Thank you very much, take care.